Welcome back to Max Garage. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like, share, subscribe, or whatever helps that stuff out at this point. You probably can't see it, but I'm standing here with a 352 Ford engine. It is an FE series of engine, and I'm getting ready to assemble it. So in the first video of the reassembly, I did a bunch of measurements. I matched things. I got everything lined up to where we're going to put them. And in this video, we are going to not actually start uh, assembling the engine yet, we're going to do another very important step that gets skipped quite often, and that is to clean the engine. So, this is a roll of toilet paper. This is something similar to what you would find at, say, a, um, a roadside rest area, or maybe a school or other government building, but you can do it with just a cheap toilet paper that works. This is just a, a bulk roll. The reason that I have this is to test whether or not the engine is clean. So there are probably some people that would need some, uh, some assistance on how to use this in general life, but your cylinder bores are the same general idea as, uh, as wiping your ass. You take your nice clean white toilet paper, stick it into the bore, wipe it out, and we've got a bunch of, uh, colored dark colored stuff that came out with the toilet paper that means this engine is not clean enough and ready to assemble yet so what we're going to do is use our Dawn dish soap our WD-40 uh, water hose an air hose with a blow gun and some of these lint free uh, rags that do not leave any residue inside the engine and we're going to go ahead take this engine and we are just going to wash it very thoroughly so that when we start putting this engine together it will be a very clean base from which to build now this is something you don't necessarily want to do until you are ready to put the engine together so today this is a sunday for me when i'm filming nobody's going to bother me today um, I can just be in here undisturbed and clean, dry, and assemble this engine. You kind of want to do that all in one step. Um, and then you actually want to get this thing running kind of as quickly as you can after that too, to move all the oil, get everything baked and into its, uh, into its pores and all that stuff so the engine doesn't rust. Um... That's more of an issue where I'm at than most places. It is like 97% humidity on an average day here. So things rust pretty quickly. Um, so let's go ahead and get this thing out into the shop and we'll start washing it. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to wash this. I'm going to use Dawn dish soap. Um, you can kind of use whatever you want. But the idea here is that over the machining process, the washing process, the transportation, all that stuff, dirt has accumulated inside of this engine. It has been washed in a hot tank already. That takes care of a lot of it. Um, but there is still some residue left behind. So I'm going to use in the Don dish soap and just regular old water. Now, if you're doing this at home and you do like one engine every couple years, it's probably not a real big deal. Just wash it and don't worry too much about where the water is going. If you're in a higher volume doing more of those, then you should have a way to collect the grease, oil, grime, whatever is going to come off of here. And it shouldn't really be all that much stuff coming off of here. It's fairly clean. But you want to have a way to collect that. On this particular engine, um, we're going to be really focused kind of on this top side here. We might flip it over. Actually, you know what? As I'm talking through this, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to kind of hose out the bottom side of this valley first. And, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I've got the bottom side done, we're going to start on this top. One of the kind of cool things is that this really won't start to rust while you're washing it. Immediately after it will, but as long as you keep it wet, it doesn't really start to get rusty. Also going to use a bore brush here on the lifters. We'll talk about these a little bit more later, but so that is the camera still dry? Yep, my glasses are not. The camera looks good. So that is the washing part of it. I'm going to kind of talk while I do this, but the WD in WD-40 stands for water displacing. So as I hose down all of these metal surfaces with WD-40, what it's actually doing is kind of getting underneath the metal or underneath the water and protecting the metal. Now notice that I'm doing this before I dry it. Okay, and that is to protect against flash rust. So I'm just going to go through, I'm going to run out of WD-40. I've got another can if I need it, but I am just coating everything with WD-40. Everything that's bare metal, that is. So now that that's all oiled off, we're going to take an air hose and spray everything out, dry everything up. With this uh, now kind of more or less dried up, I'm going to take some WD-40 again. I'm just going to kind of spray it into the top side of all the cylinders, try to get it into all the lifter bores. After I spray it in there, I'm just going to take one of these clean lint-free rags and just kind of give it a little bit of a wipe in each cylinder just to spread that out, make sure that we got, you know, everything kind of going in there. Now that we've got it back in the back room, let's take a check on our cylinder. There might be kind of a light discoloration from the from the WD-40, but we should be able to swipe this and get a fairly clean rag sample. And actually, yeah, that one has basically nothing visible on it. I bet some of these will have something. Again, no coloration, just a wetness where I where I wiped the cylinder. No coloration. Yep. So we're we're good at least on these four. Um, these cylinders are nice and clean. The next part kind of sucks on this engine because it has all the galley plugs in it already, and uh, I just put water into the oil galleys. So this part is not the most fun. Um, it's a lot easier if you don't have the plugs in them yet. Uh, however, probably if you're getting it back from the machine shop, you will. So I am going to think about this for a second. I need, actually, I need to run to town and get more WD-40. I used more than I thought I was, I had less on hand than I thought I did, and I used more than I planned on. So I'm going to go get some WD-40, and then we'll clean the oil galleys. I've been looking at this, the way this thing is laid out, I've cleaned out all the passages I can easily get to, and I've come up with there's only one way that I'm going to be 
fairly comfortable putting this engine together and in and that is to um, run oil through all of these passages to do that what I'm gonna end up doing is putting the oil pump on which I went and got my nice bagged oil pump drive and I noticed something that I did not notice when I took it apart but it was like this you can tell by the witness marks this thing's friggin bent that should be a straight shaft there are marks here where it was rubbing against something because it was bent um, I'm gonna try to straighten this out pretty good in order to use it for the uh, priming tool that I'm I'm gonna do to actually get this thing oil pumping through it but I need to order one of these because this is not going to be okay to put back into the engine and actually run. So I should have caught that on disassembly and there's, like I said, there are, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but there are marks in there that, of where it rubbed that are then covered in dirty oil. So I know this is not something that happened while it was in the drawer of the um, toolbox over there, but is what it is. So straighten this out get the oil pump bolted on pick up screen bolted on and we'll go from there so what should happen is oil will get picked up in this i know it's a drain pan this is a clean drain pan uh we use it to uh put fluid we're gonna reuse in um should get picked up by the pump up to the filter then it'll go across this galley right here, which is why I'm going to have to plug the front main. The camshaft is in, which is going to plug all those galleys. Uh, once it goes there, it transfers down the block in the center, comes back into this spot where it hits the priority main for the rear, and then goes up into this channel, which is the one that I really want to clean out. So hopefully by doing this, We'll get enough oil flow through all of this that it'll be cleaner. Um, I've never done this before. I've never felt the need to do this before. But here we are. There's the first time for anything. And uh, this is a oil feed up to the rocker shaft. So when we build oil pressure, it's probably going to blow oil out there. And then there's one on this block as well. So uh, Ken will be able to plug this one up with his finger while he runs the drill that one's gonna spray me in the face this is gonna just be a mess should i make a ring of floor dry now probably Maybe. Okay. all right let's put lifters in uh, ran some oil through it the cam is in i'm gonna put lifters in just these back two holes which are going to then block oil from flowing out of those and uh, then it should get through everything else. How did I get in here last time? All right, go ahead. that it's coming out that hole there means that it went through this log on the top so we ran fresh oil through the whole thing and hopefully what was gonna come out came out go ahead This way, this will come back in the pan. All right.
This video did not quite go uh, how I expected it to. It's taken me far longer. And uh, this is the first time I have ever hooked up an oiling system and run it to just simply flush the block out. Um, big difference there is that these have, these Fords use entirely uh, casting plugs, expansion plugs, whatever you want to call it for the oil system. So there are no threaded plugs. I couldn't easily remove them myself. And several of them were already installed. And once you install them, they are there until you replace them. I don't have another set. I guess probably, I don't even know. I, yep, this is the way I did it. So this is a giant mess. I'm going to have to spend some time cleaning stuff up, getting all of this out of the way. And then the next time you see this engine, it will be rewashed. The oil filter housing, oil pump, and lifters and cam will be back out of it, which will then be starting to assemble. So hopefully you've got the idea on how to clean one of these engines. Um, maybe one of the things that I didn't mention, but I did in the video is make sure you get all the water out of the bolt holes. That becomes a real problem if you don't do that. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hit the like, share, subscribe. And next video, I will have this thing ready to reassemble and that's what I'll be doing.